So this is the pattern that we're going to be using. It's a Tudor pattern. If you look, it's out of the Jean Honeyset book. If you look at Jean Honeyset patterns, they're sort of generic. They're a little bit generic. She's got like a few shapes that can be tweaked a little bit to, to fit whatever garment you're going to do. So what we're doing, we're actually looking at all the decoration on this. But if you look at this, there's only the two pieces. And there's not much difference in the shape other than the rounded neck and a little bit longer on the front, which this Tudor pattern fits. So what we're going to do, the difference is this one has a jigger, which is what I want to take the support of the stomacher, especially as we're only doing half a garment. It's hard to do. Normally you'd have a full stomacher going across. So in this picture, the center front opening so hence why we're using this pattern so I want you to draft this pattern up on the it's gridded you're going to be doing this outer shape here and I just want you to tweak the back and round it off about there So here's the the pattern itself. And like I said, we're going to trace this one round. And we're going to curve here. And here, if you look at the pen line, ignore this line here. That's the bottom of the shorter Tudor one. So we want it more elongated. So we're going to use the shape of that Tudor, the short one, the Tudor there. But from that point, blend it down into the longer point. So ignore that line down, and I don't have another photocopy to draw on, and I don't want to draw on my book. So this is the shape we're looking at. It says on the fold here, but because we're just making half a bodice, it will be two panels coming together like that. So um, you'll cut this out with seam allowance. And then you've got your jigger here. So the jigger on this for the support behind. You trace off your um, pattern that's on here. But you're fine for this pattern if you just take, I think it was like half inch on the top and bottom because it's a little bit too long. And what happens, it, it sits up higher and it gets in the way of your bias binding and that. So if you shave off half inch top and bottom, it fits in really well. And then we're going to add all the decoration that is on here. So the sleeve head, the sleeves and the little chemise. And the pattern for that is all is here, so you will also need to draft these patterns up. If you look at your pack, you should have 0.6 of a meter of cotille. That's the sort of sturdy fabric. it was a meter a meter uh, some calico some cotton voile which is the see-through one which will be for your chemise and your sleeve a quarter meter of some soft net I think it's two meters of half inch petersham tape and then for the decoration along the front, one inch millinery Petersham. The millinery one, you can see the difference. It's got a bump here and you can iron a curve in it. Where this other type is just straight and you can't iron the curve in it. So make sure it's millinery one 
on the front. So if you look at the decoration here, it needs to be slightly curved. So you can iron that curve into it. And some perspex boning. I think it was a couple of meters of perspex boning. It's 10 millimeter. And that's what you should have in your pack. So you have your pattern pieces here. Mm -hmm. So the back piece, the straighter grain is on the center back. And you will have one inch seam allowance on the bottom, the sides, two inches on the center back. And you can do half inch on the armhole and I'll say one inch on the neckline. The front, the straighter grain is on the front, following the front boning channel. And again, one inch, one inch, one, one, all the way around. And then your little jigger. Don't put any seam allowance on the top and bottom because we're going to shorten it anyway. And an inch on the seam allowance here and, a, and an inch on the front. And the grain is along the front edge following the boning channel there. On this one, you're going to need to slightly shorten it like I said previously so if you take half inch from the bottom and the top that's your new pattern so that it will fit on the like I said before because it ends up a little bit too long and gets in the way of your bias binding here so that's your pattern pieces So lay your pattern pieces out onto your cotille, following the grain on your centre back and centre fronts of each piece. Pin the corners and wherever you think necessary, sort of halfway down the, the length of the back if you want. Don't put hundreds of pins in, it's not necessary, just enough to hold it. And then you're going to carbon paper. Your seam allowances onto it so in the video there's a little list of the seam allowances so for this we're going to do two inches on the center back an inch on the side inch on the center front inch on the waist and the neckline and half an inch on the armhole and on the jigger, the small piece in the top left corner. Because we're going to make it shorter. And an inch on the side seam and the center front. So cut it all out in the cotille. Mark your seam allowance first and then cut it out in the cotille. And then you reverse your Cotille and mark the other side, so both sides are marked if you were making a full bodice, but in this case we're only doing half. So once you've carbon papered all your information on your cotille, it's really good to use one of these carbon wheels. They've got a dual wheel on them and you can go around, you can put however big you want your seam allowance and a wheel around your pattern piece at the same time. Yeah, and then it leaves you two marks. So you've cut it out in the cotille. And then lay your pieces onto your calico. Cut your calico out. I just cut round the pattern piece there. And then again onto your top fabric and cut them out. And because you're only going to be marking your information on the inside on the, on the cotille. So 
that saves you a lot of time of marking each one out separately and plus it gives you just a little tweak extra so when you come to put seams back they'll more or less be even so it kind of graduates very slightly as you cut it out because you you just cut them beside the line of the previous one so your front and back should have these three layers you've cut all your pattern pieces out if you look at the back panel you should car should carbon paper all your information onto the cotille and then you've lined it with calico or you could use sateen something like that and then your top fabric so layer them all up and if you look at the armhole on this the the, arm, the shoulder seam it's cut all in one piece so this becomes on the bias so this has a tendency to stretch so a little trick to stop it stretching is between the cotille and the calico if you get yourself a little piece of organza or something very fine organza is perfect on the straight and lay it on there put your shoulder back on and then you can do all your tacking of your seam allowances and it will it will just get caught in when you sew it up and it will stabilize that area having half a meter of silk organza in your kit is a really good idea because it comes in handy for little tricks like this or if you've got a curved neckline you can just pop it along in the neckline with your bias binding and it stabilizes it but because it's so fine it doesn't add any bulk and you don't even notice that it's there so for this if you want you can pop it in you don't have to because it's just a sample but just keep that in mind for future reference so I just had a little scrap hanging around so I popped it in there make sure that piece is on the straight yeah so on your front um, stomacher again you will have the three layers so you got your your cotille on the inside with all your information carbon papered on it some calico or sateen and your top fabric um, for this one you're gonna stitch just before you do your tacking out stitch your channels just on the calico and the cotille stitch your channels and make sure that you don't stop here start from here stitch you can lock or stitch there carry on lock carry off the end so your lines go completely off both ends so if you make them channels first on the calico and the cotille then lay it on the top fabric and then do all your tacking up and then for your little jigger I've just used a layer of cotille and calico or sateen whatever you're using so you just need two layers of that and then again on this I'll show you that in a minute don't you need to face it before you do the channel which I'll show you in a minute so on your jigger you need to swap sides so put the cotille on the bottom and the calico on the top and you'd machine on your center front line I popped this line here just to show you the width of the bone because when it gets turned in that width is going to be there but you need some to go past it for when you create that channel which will become relevant in a second so you swap them upside down and you're going to machine it 
and it's idea if you you can see on the back of here I can see where my line is I'm just gonna mark it just put the light a light line there and then I can machine that line So I've machined that and now I'm going to just iron it open. And then bring it back to the front. So I've just opened it up and I've marked a 12 millimeter width away and just on my carbon paper I've just drawn my line and then because this is all going to be inside you won't see it and you can see my line here to follow for the machine stitch which I'm going to do now. So machined along here which has been done on this one and then you'd put your eyelets in and I usually do them two centimeters apart and then if you get some bias binding fold it in so you've got a finished edge just wrap it so it's even front and end, front and back. And machine it with the top stitch, like in here. Um, do, do the top and the bottom, but just check it on your bodice first to make sure that when you join it in and you come to finish off with your um, your edges that they're not catching on it so my bias binding will probably come here to here so I just want that free of it so just check that it's short enough before you do that and then that's ready to be popped in and you sew up the side seam so tacking out I've tacked I started in the center and I've tacked I'm going to cross and down and then on this side I'm going to work my way down here and then back up. Remember you've got your little bit of organza in the arm here because it's on the bias. Make sure it goes into the seam allowance on both sides so it will get caught when it's stitched down. So. Make sure that's flattened out, correct? And on this side, I'm going to do a diagonal tacking stitch. I'm just going to do a big one for... the strap, because it's only narrow. So big stitches, leave your fabric on the table don't lift it up and do that and start stitching. Single thread. So this is just holding your three layers together so it will act as one. Don't pull it too tight and don't 
do too many lines of stitching because if they're too close it will kind of quilt up your fabric and then I'm just going to go up this side be careful of fabrics you're using if you've got taffeta or something that's going to mark you can just tack around in the same amounts because sometimes the um, tacking stitches especially if they get ironed on top of can leave marks in your fabric so velvet that happens taffeta it happens so what it looks like let's see the inside and the outside so that's the diagonal one and that was a straight stitch one so either way that you fancy to do it works yeah whatever gets you there that's tacking out so that's your back panel so on your stomacher you should have made your channels so you can see on the front of this one you've made your channels on the drill and the uh, the cotille and the calico and then you lay it on the top fabric and tack together so I've tacked in straight lines on here and make sure when you tack and you go in between the bone channels because you don't want to block off the channels with the thread and you won't be able to pop your bone in there yeah and then the other side of it okay you just see the straight lines at this stage as well where you can see the outline of the boning it's just if you don't want that to show what you could do is back in between your bone panel and your top fabric so here you could put a layer at or ice wool and that will diffuse the outline of the boning so for this project we're not doing that because it's just a half sample but for future reference if that if you would like to do that you can and then you're ready to do your tucking out all your seam allowances so the pictures that are following show you exactly where to tack and what colors to use So when you're tacking out your seam allowances, I like to tack just inside the seam allowance, so this, this side of the line. That way when you come to machine it, you're not catching the threads because sometimes when you catch your tacking threads, it's murder to get them out. So I do a smaller stitch, longer underneath. single thread and then go where your junction is here where your two seam allowances cross go under it and past it and then same on the other side the one going across so under it and past it And what that does is gives you a crisscross at where the seam allowances meet. So it shows you your definite points. So where my crisscross is of the seam allowances, go under and past it. So I'm about half inch before and half inch after. And then same on the other side. So half inch before, half inch after. And this side of the line. One of 
a little bit more there. <clears throat> and then I've got all my information there so you can